Welcome everyone, and thank you for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here. If you're watching via YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications to cue you when there are new videos. And be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for posts, shares, and upcoming events and videos. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website at gloria-day.com. You'll find ways to get involved, links to archived worships and helpful items for your spiritual journey, activities for the family, and more. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here and that you're joining us for worship. Good morning and welcome to worship. What a week we have had here at Gloria Day. I'm Hayden Kwame, one of the pastors, and also this week, the Bible station leader at Vacation Bible Adventure. Our theme was scuba, super cool underwater Bible adventure, and a huge thank you 
to all of the volunteers and all the families and kids who made it happen. What a blast we had. It was such a joy to share in community, to get excited about God's love and to form new friendships and strengthen old connections and just have a blast together. What a great week it was. A few other announcements as we get started. First of all, you should see that count me in on the screen. This is a chance to get involved in all kinds of different projects happening here at Gloria Day. And in particular, we are looking for folks to sign up to water plants in the garden here on site at church. You can sign up for week-long sessions online or you can give the church a call or stop by. We would really love your help. Next, we have an event coming up this week at Burn Pizza. It's June 19th from 5 to 8 p.m. You can order your pizza ahead of time, and then you can come and enjoy community. Look for the Gloria Day sign, be there, and join together with a bunch of Gloria Day people to enjoy some music and some pizza and some fellowship. We would really love it. That same day, Wednesday, June 19th, our offices here at church will be closed and we don't want you to not know that. And so please just be aware that this coming Wednesday, our offices will be closed for Juneteenth. Those are our announcements this morning. Thank you so much for joining in worship. Let's continue together with song. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living home. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence There's nothing worth more You will ever come close No thing can compare You are living home Your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and
let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Today we'll hear a story or two out of the Bible about seeds. One about planting seeds. Planting seeds makes me think of all kinds of natural processes out in nature, uh, in our bodies that just happen automatically. They're made to function in a certain way, to, to follow a process in a certain way if given the right conditions. It makes me think of a, a quote that I remind myself of sometimes. It's apparently an ancient Chinese wisdom quote. It says, don't push the river. It flows by itself. As I think of, our, of nature, our bodies, just things we're involved in uh, day to day, sometimes we might begin to fret or worry about something or want something to move along quicker than it is, and we begin to push things. We want them to happen in a certain way, in a certain time frame, and, and that's all well and good in particular situations. We need deadlines and we need things to, to move along, certainly. But sometimes, and I, I find I do this sometimes, I push things along too quickly. I, I want them to be lived out in a certain way according to a script that I've written. And I forget that my life is and a project I'm working on or whatever. It's a part of a much larger picture sometimes within an organization, uh, in a personal life, sometimes within a family situation. But just generally, our lives are part of a much larger drama and story that's being written and directed by God, by the divine. So things are oftentimes meant to happen in a certain way. Certainly there's things we need to do to affect change sometimes that's needed or to help a process along. But I find myself pushing the river sometimes, forgetting that I'm in a river that's already flowing. I don't need to make it flow. There's a larger story going on that I'm just a small part of, an important part, but just a small part. So I just need to pay attention to that, but also live within that flow, that divine love, which is the river, the metaphoric river. It's God's love. And when you think about it, when you try to, try to swim upstream or paddle a canoe against the current, it's hard work. You can do it sometimes, unless the current's really powerful, but it's hard work. It's much more enjoyable to be paddling along with the current or if you're on an inner tube just floating along or if you're standing in the river and you wanna float down the river a bit and lift your feet on your back and you're flowing along, you're being carried much more enjoyable. I know there's times when there's log jams. You might run into a rough part of the river if you're floating along or canoeing along. You might run into bits of trouble here and there that you, you need to have help to get out of. But then you can get back in the middle of the river where it's free floating and you're with the current and that's a sweet place to be. So I remind myself of this metaphor of life in the river, that there's a river that God's created that's flowing along and we're all part of it. And we can flow with that current and do our part, put in some work or some change or whatever we need to do at times, but mostly just to let the river do what it's meant to do 
and it will do what it's meant to do and we can go along for the ride and get the help we need at times, but mostly just enjoy things a lot more than fretting and pushing and stressing. Today is our singing bowl sounds and then as you hear our stories today and Pastor Marla offer her reflection on this, keep in mind that you are part of a, a river, of God's river of, of love and presence and a plan and a great drama and story going on that we're all a part of and we can float along with that river, that natural process and enjoy the ride accompanied by Christ. Think about that as our singing bowl sounds. The reading is from Mark 4, 26 to 34. He also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces, produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full gold grain. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what he could, we can compare the kingdom of God, or what parable we, will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown up upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The passage we read today had two stories in it about gardening. One was about the gardener and the other was about a seed. In the first story, the gardener uh, scatters seeds all over the ground, all willy nilly like. He doesn't use his finger or a dowel to poke a hole in the soil to carefully plant the seed. He doesn't fill the soil with fertilizer or um, add chemically enhanced plant food. He doesn't even till the earth, but he tosses the seed on the ground this way and that way. Then he goes to sleep. I mean, he must have been exhausted from all that willy-nilly tossing. Well, days go by without the gardener paying any attention to the seeds that he scattered. But one day, as if by the mighty power of God above, the seed punctures the earth. It grows into stalks and it produces a grain. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> then the gardener dons his harvesting overalls and grabs his shears and gathers the fruit of his labor. It's as easy as that. It just so happens, I mean, I don't mean to brag, but it just so happens that I have a garden just like that. And I took pictures to show you. This is Pastor Marla's garden. So the first picture shows my garden lady's mantle. Lady's mantle produces many seeds and it's easy to grow. Uh, it's got little yellow flowers, so it's pretty. It comes back year after year, which is known as perennial. And it's been described as, you know, invasive or difficult to get rid of. I like to say that it's just persistent and hardy. And then we have the field thistle. Now, field thistle is unique because it, it grows in, you know, full sun or partial uh, sun. It only needs average soil it, that can be even dry sometimes. It, it takes minimal care to grow the field thistle. And then what we find is that the thistle 
is food. It provides food for uh, pollinators like bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. Um, their seeds are eaten by the birds. And that um, actually proliferates the existence in that area, in areas like my garden, um, of songbirds like the American goldfinch. Next, we have the ground elder. Now, this, this plant has been described as pernicious, which I think is a bit harsh. Uh, I, I like to say that they're just, you, you know, uh, captivating. They are edible, just like uh, spinach would be edible. You can make a salad out of them, especially when they're young. Now to remove it, if you wanted to remove it, you would have to remove the entire root system because any scrap that's left behind will um, regenerate. So there's that. Next, we have the ostrich fern. Uh, now, I have a lot of ostrich fern in my yard because it, it spreads pretty rapidly. Um, it's not on the invasive plant list which I think is appropriate because I, w I wouldn't say it's invasive, um, but it, it, it does move in like a good neighbor and uh, yeah, takes up a little space. And then finally, I have ground ivy. Now, this is described as a noxious plant, although I find it to be delightful, not noxious. It forms this dense carpet-like, you know, ground cover, and it has little blue flowers, which I, I think are really pretty. And uh, this is a fun fact. This plant is also known as ale hoof, which was used in the production of beer before we turned to hops. Now, all you master gardeners out there who are kind of, you know, a little bit nervous right now, maybe rolling their eyes or cringing in their seats, it's okay. You can relax. I am fully aware that my garden is full of weeds. However, I am really, really good at growing weeds. It's not like I have to try hard. I'm just hashtag blessed. Now, the second, the second story is, is about, not about a gardener, but about a, a little seed. The mustard seed, as it turns out, is this tiny, tiny, tiny little seed. It, it looks like this. Now, maybe you look at this picture and say, where's the seed? At? Well, it, it's hard to see because it's so tiny. So let me make it easier for you. This is the famous mustard seed, and it is indeed truly tiny. One might think of it as so tiny that it's insignificant, but they would be wrong. Here's what comes of this tiny seed. Yeah, that's a tree. This tiny seed becomes a, a massive tree that provides shelter for birds and animals. Now, these two stories in Mark's gospel are lovely in and of themselves. And I'm sure that we can find a lot of rich meaning in them, but it's important that we understand the message that they carried to the um, Christians of Rome when the letter was written. You see, Mark's, Mark's gospel was written specifically to Jewish Christ followers in Rome around the year 64 CE. And it was widely believed that the emperor of that time, a man named Nero, had plans to rebuild Rome, but his ideas weren't getting the support of the people. So he took matters into his own hands and he set fire to the city. The entire city burned except for one place known as the Jewish Quarter. 
Now, the Jews of Rome lived across the river Tiber, and the fire didn't cross the river. So the only people who were left unscathed were the Jews. Nero was, was being accused of having started the fire because he did. So he shifted the blame away from himself and, and then accused the Jewish residents across the river of being the guilty party. They got frightened because Nero was not a good emperor. And so they too passed the blame to a small subset of them, themselves known as the believers or Christ followers or the Jewish Christians. So Nero sent his imperial guards into the Jewish quarters to hunt down these guilty Christians and make them pay. The guards went from house to house, knocking on the doors, and they were asking each family if they are part of this group of believers, if they are Jewish Christians. And if they answered yes, then they were immediately taken into custody and publicly killed in horrific ways. If they answered, no, we aren't part of this group, then they were forced to reveal a fellow Jew who was part of the believers. They had to. So the Jews were compelled to name people like their brothers and sisters, their parents, their children, their neighbors, and their friends. And then the guards would go immediately to that person's house, arrest them, and violently kill them without any form of defense or trial. This is the reality into which Mark's letter arrives. These were the people that Mark wrote his letter to. And this is the hell that they were suffering. So when we read the words of Mark's letter, the Gospel of Mark, to the believers of, of 64 CE, we have to do our best to imagine the message that they received according to the context in which they were living. That way we can understand more fully why Mark's gospel does things like never shying away from naming the suffering in the world, always getting to the point of what matters most, but never leaving them in suffering, but always, always following up with a message of hope. You see, the people needed to find hope in order to be sustained in such darkness. Whenever Mark writes about wilderness, you'll notice that he follows with a message of comfort and hope. Whenever Mark mentions sin, he always concludes with forgiveness, cleansing, healing, and restoration. This also explains why Mark spends so much time proclaiming the kingdom of God. You see, it's a reminder to them that Caesar isn't their ruler and Nero doesn't have the final word, that the kingdom in which they belong is bigger than earthly rulers and God has authority over all things, over Caesar and over Nero, even over creation. You know, nothing depicts this better in my mind than the way that nature reclaims space. Here's what I mean. Think about those seeking power or privilege or those vying for control. The one who wants power to, you know, have power over others or those who cut corners to get ahead. The systems established to maintain the wealth gap or systems created to preserve the separation of the classes, of the races, of the genders and the ages, or the sinners. When we lose sight of God's invitation to peace, justice, and love, and lose sight of our responsibility to protect those values, it is as though we are trying to tame nature itself but nature won't be tamed no matter how hard we try. 
Nature always reclaim, reclaims its space. But take a look at these pictures. These are photographs of places and things created by humans meant to manage, maintain, and diminish the impact of nature. These are pictures of pavement or metal, buildings, signs, and various other things created to keep nature at bay. But just as Nero couldn't eradicate the believers in 64 CE or squelch their hope, neither will God allow creation to be tamed by humankind. Creation will persist. You and I are part of God's creation. No matter how hard it gets or how dark it seems, how desperate we may feel, God won't fail us. We will be restored. This is the good news Mark shared with the Jewish Christians in Rome, and it's the good news for us today. The story about the farmer who haphazardly spreads seed on the ground and then walks away is a message to trust God to do what God will do. Just as a seed can't help but grow, God will restore us. God won't leave us in the wilderness. God won't doom us for destruction or leave us shattered. Life may try to defeat us, but God will without needing any help from us, bring us back from the edge and into the kingdom again. So have hope, hold on to hope. The second story also spoke hope to the, to the Jewish Christians in 64 CE, just as it speaks hope to us today. Even if we have the smallest amount of faith even if we can only utter the tiniest prayer for help, even if there is just one little itsy bitsy seed of hope, it is enough. It will always be enough. This is the good news of Mark's gospel for us today. May it plant a seed of hope in you and in me, in all of us. Let's join together in prayer, surrounded by God's love. Let's pray. Faithful God, you take even the smallest of good things and multiply them a hundredfold. Draw us out of ourselves into a deeper sense of our belovedness, of our place in this community, and of the impact we can have in the world around us because of your spirit in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for our super cool underwater Bible adventure this past week. You showed up in powerful ways through decorations, stories, songs, laughter, conversation, kids, volunteers, and all the connections between them. Continue to connect all the people of all ages who were involved in Vacation Bible Adventure and continue to inspire our faith in you as a community. We thank you for the gift of community and for all the ways we got to enjoy it this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you are at work even as we sleep. Yet so often anxiety, fear, frustration, pain, and confusion keep us awake at the end of the day. So scatter new seeds of possibility, love, and connection in our lives and give us patience in the midst of our worries. Grant us a peace that passes understanding, not because everything is okay, but because you are always with us. Keep showing up with faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, the whole earth is yours and all that is in it, and yet so many pockets of creation cry out for justice, mercy, and peace. Stand with and empower all victims of violence, oppression, and abuse. Especially we pray for Ukraine, Gaza, and Sudan. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for those who are sick, in pain, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Especially we pray for Mary Sorum and all who are in the hospital, on hospice, or in extra need of your care right now. Wrap them up in your love and comfort and surround them with people who care for them. Finally, God, we pray for those grieving the death of a loved one, especially the families of Deborah Godel, Dick Finlayson, and Norris Nelson. Cover them with your grace and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just as we can trust God's hope, God's presence, God's kingdom to grow in us, we trust that God will nurture us, will provide for us, and will live in us and through us. We find this promise to be most evident in the, the uh, sacrament of the Lord's Supper. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after he'd given thanks, he broke it and offered it to them saying, this is my body, it's been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and after he'd given thanks, he offered it to all of them saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And when the disciples wanted to know, how do we pray? Jesus provided for them just like he provided them with the bread and the wine. He said, pray this way. And he used the words of the Lord's prayer that we still recite today saying, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For growing, for everyone born a star overhead. A woman and man, a place at the table, revising the roles, deciding the share. Wisdom and grace, dividing the power. A woman and man, a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. For young and for old, a place at the table voice to be heard a part in the song the hands of a child and hands that are wrinkled for young and for old the right to be long just and unjust a place at the table abuser abused with need to forgive in anger and hurt 
mindset of mercy for just and unjust a new way to live and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy justice and joy yes God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy compassion and Stray to place at the table, a covenant shared, a welcoming space, a rainbow of race, and gender and color, gay and for straight, the chalice of grace. For everyone born a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be. To work, to speak out, to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. This week has been a blast. Our vacation Bible adventure was in full swing. Each day, our kids were greeted by amazing volunteers. Then they sang together. And with their crew leaders, they got to have an adventure running through the church. They were tie-dyeing shirts, playing games, having Bible stories in a whale. Oh, and the snacks? The snacks were so good. I want to say thank you to our volunteers who helped make this week an adventure unlike any other and to our children, youth, and family staff for planning and recruiting people to walk along with our kids as they learned about God through this underwater theme. This is one of those weeks that makes a kid's summer. These ministry opportunities happen because of you and your financial generosity. Seriously, we cannot do this without you. If you would like to support the ministries at Gloria Day, you can give online or mail a contribution to church. And on behalf of all of us, Thank you so much for being so generous. When the sea is calm and all is right, when I feel your favor flood my life, even in the good I'll follow. The good I'll follow you When the boat is tossed up on the waves When I wonder if you'll keep me safe Even in the storms I'll follow you Even in the storms I'll follow you Cause I believe everything that you say see the wicked prospering when I feel I have no voice to sing even in the wants I'll follow you even in the wants I'll follow you cause I believe everything that you 
Myself so far from home, and you lead me somewhere that I don't want to go. Even in my death, I'll follow you. Even in my death, I'll follow you. So I believe everything that you say you are. I believe I've seen your unchanging heart. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, everyone. We're always so glad to have you online with us here for worship. Hope you'll be back again next Sunday, same time, same place at 9.30 here on YouTube. Uh, we are moving along in the summer. We hope we're, you're having some good weeks of in, enjoying the summer with family and friends. And we hope you'll be back again to enjoy worship with us next Sunday. In the meantime, now, as you go out into this new week, take with you these words of blessing and benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.